us, our first guest this week, we have David Snyder joining us. He's the founder and CEO of Harness Wealth. Welcome, David. How are you? Great to be here. Doing well. Thank you. Harness Wealth. So tell us about it. How do you use technology to, I don't even want to say harness wealth, but to help, <laughs> help people um, reach a certain potential in the wealth space? Yes. So um, what we found in the early days of thinking about where the biggest opportunity was is that people want the best of technology to find where opportunities are, but ultimately to have the best experts actually guide them to realize those opportunities. And so while there are a lot of great tech-only solutions, lots of great individual experts and firms, we really wanted to build a solution that helped people holistically. Um, in many ways, what we've built is modeled off of the ultra high net worth family office experience where there's a whole team trying to connect the dots between what you should do on the tax side and what you should do with your will and the state and how to think about financial planning. We've used tech to pull that all together, but still embracing those that know best to deliver the services. And from what I understand about Harness Wealth, it's almost like a matchmaking system, right? So you're matching financial advisors and professionals with their clients in a yeah. sense through technology. Exactly. I mean, it goes beyond that, but it starts with how do you figure out what you ought to be doing? Like, do you actually need a more sophisticated tax person? Is there opportunity to actually do something on the trust and estate side or more advanced planning? When that is the case, we've got a network of best in class advisors that are building technology to help connect what they each do in order for you to reach your best financial future. So why do people need financial advisors? Like, why is that even necessary? Shouldn't you just take your money and throw it in the bank or randomly invest in the stock market or buy a fixer up or down the street? Like, why do we need professionals? Yeah, so I think, you know, there are a few different elements to, to that question. I think for a lot of people, um, there's just a stress and anxiety that comes with money. And so we did a survey of a thousand households that found that those that actually worked with an advisor on average were twice as happy as those without, I think because they knew that they were proactively taking the right steps, that they had a plan to get themselves from wherever they were to their longer term financial goals and weren't missing opportunities. I mean, the second is the complexity of the average household is increasing, that tax code is getting more nuanced. And so as more people and their partners are working in dual income areas, more private company stock, more opportunities to invest in things like alternative assets. It gets complicated really it fast. It gets complicated quickly. And so I think we want to be a guide and a resource for those that want to do it themselves, that make sure they're you know, covering all the bases. And for those that realize, oh, wow, there's a ton of stuff that I could be unlocking. If they don't want to do it themselves, we've got a solution to help take care of it as well. We see a lot of wealth management firms really focusing on millennials and helping them, but mm -hmm. you're focused more so on the often overlooked Gen Z group. Why is that? Yes, yeah, so Gen it's, X. It's really right? Gen X. Gen X. We're so focused on yeah. Gen Z and millennials. I knew Gen Z Gen was going to happen. Gen X. X. Yes. Yeah. Are you Gen X? Gen Z? I'm not telling my age. <laughs> I'm not telling my age. I think, yeah, the distinctions I think are, are blurry for us, but really what we found is that the group of people that are in their 30s, 40s, 50s are ones where a transition happened. Historically, if you worked for a big company, they were going to take care of a defined pension plan. You did your job. Someone my else grandfather would worry about course, your yeah. retirement. Mm -hmm. And that's all but gone. And so it's more and more important for people in that demographic to have this full solution to, you know, really take the proactive steps that they should across all these areas, not just financial planning, not just saving, not just, you know, thinking about home ownership, to be in a place where they can support their own children. You know, it's just Gen X is often referred to as the sandwich generation because more than any other group in time, they're often taking care of a parent and a kid. And so the complexity of that also is exacerbated and just making sure that opportunities that are there get captured. So let's talk about the way men and women approach financial planning and why, it's di why they're different. Yeah, so I'd, I'm fortunate that my co-founder in the business, Katie, is a talented financial service veteran. Um, she helped run one of the largest digital investment advisors in Europe before that. And you know, we talk about this a lot and we think it's a mistake to overly generalize that, oh, you know, one gender is more aggressive or less aggressive than, than others. Um, 
it really is about finding the right combination of behaviors and who's the resource that actually you want to listen to to help get you to your best financial future. So like for someone who's using harnesswealth.com, we give people the choice. Like, would you rather work with a female advisor or a male advisor? That's great. Would you rather work with someone who's in their 50s, 60s or in their 30s? Because different people respond differently well, to different types of It's important to have a dynamic relationship with the person who's handling what, you know, your future, really, your yeah. financial future. Exactly. I mean, ultimately, you want someone that you can trust. And there, we have a, a very sort of in-depth diligence process in order for an advisor to get on the platform. But then there are certain passive things of you guys are successful media people. So there are certain experts that know more about media communications, entrepreneurs than those about people running a doctor's practice in the Midwest. Um, but there are just things that really are innate to people of, do you prefer a certain type of person to work with? And we want to embrace all of that. Yeah, and so people invest in things that they understand. You know, right. young people invest in young companies and older yeah. people like the old economy. Isn't that right? Again, I think that's generally the case, but we, you know, find people that are in their 50s that want to understand cryptocurrencies and people that are in their 30s and feel like, oh, I was a little too close to the last you know, financial recession. How do I develop a portfolio that will grow, but where I'm not taking on undue risk in case there's another market downturn? Um, and so really it's about building that custom profile that make people feel comfortable and help them to take the steps they should. Well, congrats on all congrats. your success. All those investors, including Bain Ventures. Wow. Very impressive. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I think we're fortunate that lots of others see the opportunity. I mean, there's $80 billion spent just by the sort of 20 million households kind of in our core demographic. And um, we feel like we're on at least the right path to helping a lot of those folks reach a better financial future. David Snyder, HarnessWealth.com. Thank you for joining us here on Bold harness, TV. Harness your wealth. Harness your wealth. <laughs> Thanks, David. Thank you. <laughs>